Welcome to the ninth episode of Coping with Jesus, a podcast brought to you by St. Walter Church in Roselle, Illinois. My name is Donna Burke, and I will be your host. Today we're going to talk about um, a habit of Jesus that um, really is more like a lesson. Um, and we find in the in the scriptures that uh, Jesus, towards the end of his three years of preaching, became very um, focused on what his mission was, what he was uh, here to do. And so we are going to be talking about um, setting priorities. And of course, Jesus' priority is quite serious, perhaps compared to some of ours, but um, setting priorities and the importance of that. And in the scriptures, Jesus teaches us many things about how to live our lives. We have with us today someone who spends a lot of time uh, in her life pleasing, trying to please and model Jesus. And so we have Christine Everhart back with us today. Christine, how are you? Feeling great today. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. Enjoyed our conversation before the, <laughs> before we came on. Um, so I'm doing very well. And last time you were on, we talked a lot about the beginning of the pandemic and um, how things were going and how you were coping. And we've come a long way since then. So, um, of course, that plays into who, who we are today and how we're doing. But but how are you doing these days, these last few Isn't months? Isn't it hard to believe eight months have eight gone months by already? Nine. That uh, Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think um, sometimes it seems like the days go slow, but the weeks go by fast and the months go by even faster. So it's hard to believe that, you know, where we thought we would be enjoying time with our family now for the holidays, that it's still, you know, pandemic it's and pandemic. there's all sorts of other issues that we're dealing with coping with and uh yeah so we we might have to change our plans and change our priorities and reset things refocus i think we talked last time about centering recentering our lives um let me just read today's scripture it's very short as usual um where we got jesus's um setting priorities uh habit example And it's from Luke 9, and it says, As the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. So he knew it was time. He was ready to go. His friends weren't really sure it was. They often had a little pushback mm-hmm. on, on his plans, and of course they didn't want to hear about uh, any hard times that were coming. But Jesus was focused on obeying and following uh, his father's uh, orders, his father's goal for him. And so in your life, um, have any have any of your routines changed and priorities changed and and reset themselves over these last few months? Oh, gosh. Um, That's a small question. Sometimes I think, uh, you know, my whole life has changed. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the big priority has always been, you know, we're here um, to live a good life following what Jesus models and then uh, get to be with him at the end. But how that plays out every day is different. And this year has been so challenging that I think we started out with the health pandemic, the coronavirus, and then we found out we had 
all sorts of issues with racial injustice that came and kind of hit us. Yes. And then we had the whole political um, division that was so prevalent in the news media and um, brought up so many feelings um, that people actually, you know, were divided and um, things that maybe we didn't see in our country. Maybe they were there, but um, kind of hidden under the rug. Mm -hmm. And now they're brought to attention. So how do we deal with all of this? Right. You know? So it's not, it, it's health, it's, but it's a different kind of health. We have a lot of unhealthy things going on, not just a pandemic, not just a, a, a virus. Mental health, Mental emotional health. health. Right. Um, I mean, we hear that in the paper, you know, the amount of suicide or... Um, you know, mental health issues or, you know, people suffering because they don't have a job and they're alone or they don't have the money and who knows. Um, the embarrassment of saying, you know, what do I do next? Where can I go? So now as you're talking about all these really big things, mm. I'm thinking to myself, a lot of people had little priorities set. Oh, I gotta make sure I have enough food. I've gotta make sure I have enough supplies. I've gotta make sure um, nobody sees me at this party in the backyard. I've gotta make, you know, a lot of little things where people were trying to follow those rules and those priorities. And But there's so many big things to worry about. And so then we as individuals need to set, okay, what is my priority right now? What fits in with my family, my life? but can be helpful to the world to try to change and, and right. make so a better place. Right, so you mentioned the word worry, and I think that's one of the things God tells us not to do. Mm -hmm. Fear not, I am there, you know, that worry part. So how do we set ourselves up first thing in the morning so that we aren't hit with, oh my gosh, you know, there's so many more deaths, or there's so many this, or my friend has COVID or something like that. So I think that's where we started out with the fact that if we start out with prayer, we start out with Jesus, knowing that he is with us and he will give us whatever we need during the day. And if we feel that we're weakening from that, we, we got to go back to prayer. Go back to You know, I, I just think that has to be such a focus um, and not letting the interruptions we had talked about, not letting them again um, bring that fear back in. I think one of the things I know I um, made a point of is not turning the TV on during the daytime. I know, particularly for my husband, it's like you have to keep uh, informed. So I didn't want to not listen to news because that's not facing reality either. But, um, but putting it on and listening to it, over and over and long. over again. Mm -hmm. How does that bring you um, any peace, any energy to do anything that we need for ourselves, for our family, for our friends, for the strangers? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that that was a big one for me is to keep that limited to the evening, get the evening news or read the newspaper briefly. Um, and then try to figure out what can I do in a positive way to help myself first. Right. You can't help others if you don't help yourself. So I think um, between prayer, um, I uh, I did feel I should eat better. Uh, I will tell you though that that has always been a challenge for me. So. Um, I put that out there and I do it for a while and then I slip back again. Same mm -hmm. thing with exercise. I think those are all good things that we need to do to take care of ourselves. And um, But, you know, there are days that you just think, I just don't have the energy to do that. Right. Um, so uh, I think that's where having um, conversations with friends and I'm blessed to have my family with me so we'd have some conversations and that would re-energize me to be more positive and then to be able to give to others because that's always so rewarding is there's always people that are um, in more need than you no matter what your circumstances absolutely absolutely 
You said so many things that I'd like to get back to. Can we maybe take an hour or two? <laughs> <laughs> you want to circle um, on back to circle, yes. <laughs> um, but the first one, go back to your, your prayer, is um, I cannot imagine, and I do pray for people that do not turn to God in prayer. Mm. I cannot imagine doing this without prayer, without turning to Jesus for the peace or the guidance, um, just because uh, it's not always peace. You know, you don't always feel it right away, but just just so. Um, so I do pray for people that don't have that. And then um, you mentioned um, having people to share with and talk and, and have conversations with. And it is uh, beautiful if you can reach out and Zoom or call or depending on where we, what stage we're in, in our state, take a walk or whatever. But um, it's also a lot of people that was a new focus was to have conversations at home that weren't there before. And I think that's a beautiful thing that's that's been happening. So you've got some of those ideas coming out. Um, the third one that really struck me was your eating. Um, many of us don't realize as we get up kind of depressed again that it's another day, that there are some things we can do to help ourselves. Absolutely. Yes, we can pray. Yes, we can have conversations. We can also eat better. Mm -hmm. Or take a walk and have exercise, and mm -hmm. not just exercise, but let your mind just flow and go where it is. So those were beautiful examples of, of ideas of things, um, ways that we can cope. And then so the fourth thing is that um, helping others can also be something that helps you cope because it brings you to a positive place. And don't you have something to share that you and your family are doing uh, now. Yeah, so um, we're doing this podcast the day before Thanksgiving, um, and uh, what our family has um, decided to do is, as a family, to make Thanksgiving meals for people that are going to be alone. We can't invite them over to our house because of COVID, but we can certainly make things for them and bring them to them so that, you know, they're not feeling they're alone that nobody cares. They are loved. And that's, I think that's what Jesus would say, that this is how you show your my love to Absolutely. others is through you. Um, so yes, so we have a production line. My son-in-law's over at home right now making the turkeys. And um, we're getting everybody involved, even to my granddaughter who loves to do calligraphy. And she's making little name tags to put on there just to personalize it. And, uh, you know, just give them some love through that type of um, service. Service. And, and mm -hmm. it is love and kindness. And um, certainly it's modeling Christ, modeling what Jesus would do to take care of people in need. But you're also bringing your family, as you're thanking God for your own family, you're bringing your family to uh, a memory and uh, a very meaningful experience together. And, and I think too that, um, you know, sometimes you don't say that you're doing these things because people, you know, take it as you're, uh, I don't know, not the word bragging, but, you know, you're talking about yourself. Look what yeah, good I'm yes, doing. Yes. And yet, if we don't share these things, we don't spread those ideas that you can help others by doing this because we get so locked in our own little world that we forget, you know, yes. that God wants us to go out. To branch out. And um, I know that my husband Greg was talking to uh, a friend of his and they asked if they could help. They wanted to partner. They wanted to pick up some of the um, to-go boxes. How could they help? How could they help provide? And so by sharing what we were doing, got them involved, and they were excited to be part of helping others that were in need at this point. And maybe those people, again, will be able to pay it forward at another time yes, when their certainly. job is reinstated or whatever the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Or um, share that uh, somebody dropped, you know, these this nice couple, this nice family made this meal for me and dropped it off, and you're telling somebody else that, your relative. 
and that's an idea it's planting an idea and why is it that um, people are not shy to share their secrets of their recipes or their secrets of their um, shopping experiences or whatever but they don't want to share their good deed stories because you don't want to look like you're trying to be better yeah but those stories are so important to share um, not to be bragging not to be saying but to be saying I we had this great idea and it was such a blessing for us mm -hmm. you know not like we're taking care of all of God's people but we it was a blessing for us to do a little something which is a big something but you know well, and there are people all over doing this. Yes, um, yes. Obviously. but it's good to be for them to be shared. Well, it's just like the news. Why isn't it wonderful when you hear a story, a heartwarming story like that, and the news instead of all of the other things? The reason we turn the news off is mm -hmm. because of all the negative things. But um, God wants us to to share our positives, I think, too, because um, your idea, talking to you and getting an idea from you, I can develop an idea or use your idea and share it um, so thank you that's going to be a beautiful and I think you. you know not not everybody has the means or um, you know wants to get out and be by other people even you know but those like you said those phone calls um, they are so important to call Absolutely. people and it's amazing how many people are alone yes for whatever reason um, that they are home sitting by themselves. So if we are feeling the stress and want to know how do we cope with this pandemic and all that's going on, and we have family members with us, how are those who are alone? How does it feel if they're doing alone? it? Right. You know, so I think um, mostly because they're not sharing and talking and having conversations to bring them to another place. So my prayer is that they are talking at least to the Lord and um, finding some comfort there because um, if you're alone and you don't have anyone else to talk to. Um, so so very true. It's been said many times around um, St. Walter's campus this last week, you know, about people that are alone. Um, and we're very proud that we made those phone calls to all the, the parishioners and so many of them were alone at the time they got the phone call. Um, more than we would have guessed, you know, so 4,500 people, ones we got through to, many of them were like, oh, you have no idea, your phone call was just at a perfect time. You know, where, where did that come from? The Holy Spirit must have made me dial that number at this time, because I didn't right. know that, you know. Right. But, so I really respect you sharing your story uh, about making the uh, meals and delivering them. Will you all go, will you be going in different directions to deliver? You know, we don't have a plan for that yet. Oh good, something uh, to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes we're flying by the seat of our pants. That's good. Uh, you, know, just, it, you know, it works. You let God kind of lead that. I know some people are working today, and so they might be the ones delivering tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, some of us are cooking today. Um, so we'll see how that all plays out. And you are out. blessed that you live together, so you do get to have Thanksgiving with your family, too. Tomorrow. Yes, I, I am be... blessed that way. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And do you have a tradition where you go around and everybody says something they're thankful for? We do. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, um, it'll be different this year. Yes. It'll be different. But... Um, there's always something to be thankful for. Oh, so much. So again, that's another conversation I've had with a lot of people. And this is these are hard times, but there's so much to be thankful for. So many lessons being learned. Yeah. Well, and Father, um, well, both Father Mario and Father Peter just had that radical gratitude. Yeah, really. It fits right into what beautiful. we're talking about. Is you those know, were beautiful homilies and radical being gratitude. grateful. So at the end of the day, when we close mm -hmm. in prayer, right, we look mm -hmm. back at the day and say all the things that we are grateful that Jesus mm -hmm. put into our life, even the struggles. Because how do we grow? And actually, um, my thirteen-year-old granddaughter and I were talking yesterday. She's been writing some poetry beautiful poetry, uh, really mature for a 13-year-old, as a grandma would say. <laughs> and, um, you know, she talks about, you know, how do we learn but through the struggles. And I thought, wow, for you to understand that, that at this beautiful. age that is, is really good. Because um, it is through the struggles. It's not We're not thankful for the rough times, but the rough times 
have taught us some important lessons. Right. And thank you, Lord, for that. So I greatly appreciate you sharing today and coming to be with us and all that you're doing to help um, others. I was a little jealous yesterday because um, our the man who was collecting pies from St. Walter's is delivering them to the to the different um, shelter food shelters and food um, pantries today, and I was like, I wish I could mm. be free to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. But instead of being jealous, I was proud and happy that we were doing it. Um, I tried to turn that turn that over. So um, so let's close with a prayer, unless you have some final words of wisdom. I'm just sad our conversation is over, Donna. Yeah, I don't get to talk to you. <laughs> no, we can say it's over. <laughs> no, um, I, you know, again, I we talked about setting our priorities, and I think um, it's good each day to have a, a priority in following Jesus, not knowing necessarily where that plan's going. We can put the agenda out there, and then. Um, be open to him leading us and and just keep I think keep feeding ourselves um, the positives and the gratitude so that when we get down and we feel that feel it he wants us to feel the sadness he wants us to feel the frustration it's not that you have to be this um, positive person all the time with the smiles on your face but um, thank God I know <laughs> <laughs> Feel it, but then allow him to work through you to continue on to, mm -hmm. you know, be the person that he created us to be. I used to say things to to God like, I, I know these are hard times. I'd be happy to go through it. I'm happy to go through it, Lord. If you could just tell me how it's going to end, it would be easier, you know. <laughs> I don't know if we want to know that. <laughs> that doesn't mean we don't get those answers. We have to have um, blind faith, and that's yeah. that's what we're aiming yeah. for. So, um, so Lord God, we thank you for this conversation today. Thank yes, you so Lord. much for um, my friend Christine being across the screen here from me. Um, and thank you for all that Christine and her family are doing for others, coming from the heart. Um, and from their desire to model you and serve as you did, Lord. And be with us as we move forward uh, through these times and help us as we cope with life. In your sweet name, amen. amen. Thank you again for being with us. And thank, thank you, for you having all me. for joining us today. We will continue to talk about setting priorities in our next episode.